BYD came to Yokohama. I didn't think I would ever see the day, but here we are. Uh, BYD is a Chinese um, electric vehicle manufacturer. Um, I read that they also specialize in lithium ion batteries. And uh, so a lot of the vehicles we see, EVs that we see on the road, maybe even this guy here, um, have BYD batteries in them. So I came down here because it's actually quite close to where I live um, to check out the, the whatever they have here. Um, I think right now they just have the one car, uh, the one we see here. So I'm going to go in and check the car out and yeah, let's see if I can do what I did at uh, Hyundai and uh, charge my bike up. I don't need to, but uh, let's see if they let me. あの、これがなんかとか入ってもらって。あと 200 volt charging. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Oh, nice screen. Oh wow. This is interesting. <laughs> it's like a guitar. It actually strums differently. <laughs> That's that's bizarre. It's like a guitar. <laughs> Speakers, I assume, and a guitar. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so interesting. That's speakers. I don't know what this is. Hmm. I'm gonna get a closer look. I'm just gonna take off my jacket. It's warm today. Oh, nice sunroof too. All right. So this is the BYD. Auto 3 and uh, it's like a SUV it's a yeah. SUV type car and uh, mm -hmm. okay automatic that's good wow nice interior deep I guess that's a charging cable probably have a look Got a sore throat today, so I'm eating some candy. Yeah, it's a charging cable. This is the 200 volt charging cable, which I would use at home. Yeah, that plugs into my socket at home. Okay. So yeah, I would charge it at home most of the time, which is what I do. Partial shelves, I hate partial shelves. <laughs> but it's removable, so that's good. So yeah, it's... Um, um, so you can lock it from here and you can just close it open and close it it's got a wiper unlike the Ionic 5 which really needs it uh, there's the guitar strum again it's on every uh, it's in every door this one doesn't strum quite as much as the other one I think something the kids can play with and drive you nuts with. I'm not sure what this is. I think that's how you open the door. So yeah, when you want to get out, you open the door. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's how you open the door. So interesting. So of course, Japan, so it's right hand drive. And let's close the door. Hmm. So it's got the uh, cluster here. Inf 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 oh, this is the infotainment. It's playing a video about Chademo. <laughs> okay, so steering wheel, um, lane assist, lane keep. Oh, that's for the screen, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's got a rotating screen, which I think is really awesome. But um, I guess that's useful for navigating. 
So if you're using like Google Maps, it's more useful to have the screen vertical like this. And when you're watching a video, maybe waiting for the car to charge, you put it horizontally for watching videos. Climate control. Okay. Analog, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, park. Reverse, neutral drive. Volume up and down. Yeah, volume media controls. Okay, pretty good. Um, driving modes. Yeah, parking, hazards, there's the key. Yeah, lots of space. Yeah, it's a very good family car, I would say. It's got like light up LEDs here. In Japan, like all the cars must have um, a flare inside. Um, so every car, even like the Model 3 will have like a flare somewhere in the car. A lot of Japanese cars usually have the flare under here, so it's in case you need to uh, pull over on the side of the road and in an accident or you know your car breaks down, you're supposed to drop the flare behind your car so people can see that you've stopped. It's just for the highway. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got ETC. Like all cars in Japan must have ETC so you can drive on the highway. I mean, you don't have to, but it's turning into that. Um, yeah, so you've got like, yeah, um, lights here and maybe lane assist, I'm not sure. And uh, wipers, yeah. Yep, mirror control, window control. <laughs> Can't get over that. <laughs> um, yeah, seats are perforated, so I'm assuming they, they have uh, built-in heating and maybe cooling. Um, seats are pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, yeah, very comfortable seats actually. A lot more comfortable than my i3. Um, yeah. Ooh, LED lights. Uh, these are definitely LEDs. There's the, uh, the thing for the ETC. You've got a, a drive recorder. They're called drive recorders in Japan, but dash cams basically. Um, I'm not sure what all this stuff up here is. Probably something to do with driving assist like yeah it's got some like driving assist functions here hmm yeah that's about it really it's not that much to do in here really I'm guessing the screen has a lot more um, uh, how do I get out of here okay there's just like a video right now video local where okay we go home Got navigation powered by Zen names. Okay, so this is Japanese car navigation um, designed for Japan. Like uh, the problem with um, you know Japan being very localized is that a lot of um, you know things that people might use in the West won't work here. So Japan has its own you know. Um, system for navigation you can of course use Google Maps but, but most cars won't integrate Google Maps in Japan um, but yeah so I guess we just have to go home then we have like Spotify here and radio uh, climate control yeah yeah that's all the climate control heat yeah it has something for seat heating here it's a heater, seat heating. So in winter, that's gonna heat up your seats. Um, can you? Yep. Okay. Okay. So this looks a lot like, um, you know, like an Apple interface. Um, Android. It's probably Android because I don't know. It's Apple. Apple CarPlay. Um, utilities. Yeah. Interesting. Bluetooth connectivity. BYD assistant. Spotify system i'm sure you can change all this you know to other languages of course but uh, yeah it's just japanese by default here oh, pretty cool i think the coolest feature is definitely that the screen rotates like that <laughs> that's pretty cool uh, uh yeah it's just a gimmick though really but uh, the back of it looks like this and yeah it's pretty cool so we have yeah, that's it. Okay.
So it's kind of like having a tablet, like having an iPad in your car. Um, okay, let's have a look in the back. So this is how you open the door. It's actually kind of awkward because you have to like open and then push with your elbow. It's a little bit awkward. Uh, so interesting. Okay, so the back seats, um, they look spacious. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, I like the, the uh, yeah, I, okay, it's got this second mesh cover, which definitely helps in summer, because like in summer, it's always too hot uh, in Japan. And uh, even if the glass is tinted, the heat still comes through. So this is a full sunroof. Um, it's even a little mesh up here that I guess helps to keep bugs and stuff out of the car um, as you're driving. But yeah, on a warm, sunny day, you can open this up and let air inside the car. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go back in the front and check that out. In the back here, we have USB-C and A. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's for charging your devices. Climate control in the back, very analog. <laughs> okay, pockets, leather seats. Um, yeah, it's comfortable. I'm pretty sure the back seats are also heated. And then there's the back. Yeah, let's go back in front and check out the uh, check out the uh, sunroof. Oh. <laughs> One, two, let's see. Yeah, there's some information here, like uh, how fast you're going or the lane, um, the the driving speed. Uh, I mean, like whatever the top speed is on the street you're driving. Range 980 kilometers. That seems too high. <laughs> uh, maybe that's just how much this has driven. No, that's how much this car has driven. 83%. Oh, okay, I get it. So it's 83% and you get like 380 kilometers of range. So at 100%, you probably have around 450 kilometers of range, which is really good. Um, standard, normal. I'm guessing there's like, um, you know, like different... Um, Let's see if I can change the driving modes. Eco, sport, normal. Eco, sport, normal. Yep. Okay. And I think 900 kilometers is how much this car has driven. Uh, back to the sunroof. How does this work? Is it haptic? Oh yeah, it's haptic. Okay, so I'm closing the sunroof. Okay, so that's a closed sunroof, and then, um, oh, the sunshade, that's how you close the sunshade, that's how you open it. So that's the full, um, you know, opening, so it's quite big, it goes all the way to the back, and it's really nice and wide, and you get lots of light in the back here, this is really, really nice in summer. So I like how it's partially glass and partially sunroof, so you can open this part, and you can, uh, and then the back is just glass. And then, uh, see, yeah, and that's how you open it. You can open it a little bit, or you can open it all the way. That's cool as shit. <laughs> and then this, oh, that goes all the way back. And then you can bring it forward to cover up. Can you go all the way? No, this way keep going I don't think you can when it's open so maybe you have to like yeah it opens up together okay so let's close it all the way and then close the shade all the way okay sunshade is now closed uh, the glass roof is closed now the sunshade is gonna close yeah so as I said when it gets very hot in summer you definitely need this sunshade and that's something that Tesla lacks and I think Hyundai doesn't have this either and yeah this is actually really convenient especially if you live in hot climates uh, you definitely need uh, the the sun shade as well as the sun roof and yeah on a hot day you're just gonna keep this closed because it's gonna heat up the car too much so it's really good to have so yeah definitely a great selling point for this car you have the amazing panoramic roof but you still have a sunshade that's really awesome 
that's really cool yeah and I love how there's like a little mesh thing up here that I guess helps keep bugs out or stops trash from coming in or whatever when you're driving oh yeah and this is it maxed out it won't open any more than this and that's good because you know you you don't want it to be completely wide open <laughs> that would be weird but definitely um, this is something a cool feature of this car that definitely is a selling point um, yeah mm -hmm. okay oh so yeah you can actually delete stuff from here okay I guess I should go back to the video <laughs> that they were playing then put it back to full screen so this video is an kind of an educational video that tells you what the car can do. Panoramic roof, yeah, we just covered that. Really cool. <laughs> wow. So this doesn't appear to be exclusively BYD because there's a bunch of like other cars in the back there. There's like Mercedes and BMWs back there. So maybe this is just like a regular dealership. I don't know if you can open the front trunk. This is the styling of the car. It's an interesting color. It's like it's blue, metallic blue, but it kind of like changes. The shade changes. Um, plastic trim here. So it's like um, SUV style design. Eco Contact 6 tires. Um, these look like maybe 18, 19 inch wheels. Yeah, not really sure. Uh, yeah, 18, R18. So these are 18 inch wheels. Wipers, normal wipers, normal um, mirrors here. Pretty wide mirrors, like I have a big hand, so you can see how big it is. <laughs> it's a big mirror, good for visibility. And UID tech, LED lights all the way around. I think there's a light bar here that probably lights up. So it's the Yato 3, it's the first um, BYD car in Japan. And yeah, I think this came out recently worldwide. It's not just Japan, of course. Um, lock, you can lock here. Um, you have a keyhole in case your battery runs out, I guess. Okay, some information here. This um, place is pretty bare bones. Um, they have some free drinks over here. Um, play area for kids and yeah that's it just the one car here they do have cars outside I think these are the test uh, cars you can drive yeah so there's a gray Ato 3 and a white one they all have the same wheels yeah looks like it so yeah I'm, I'm close to the Tomei um, highway which is um, close to where I live like literally like 10 minutes to get here on my bike あの、okay looks like there's a lever to open the back the, the front the front trunk ah, okay ah, Okay, there's no frunk here, just um, um, battery. This is the 12 volt battery, so easy access to the 12 volt, so easy to replace. You know, everyone's still using live, um, regular, you know, lead acid 12 volt battery, which I think is bizarre. Like, I, st I still can't believe that. Um, and, and that's just to run the 12 volt systems, which just means the lights and stuff. And no manufacturer has figured out how to move away from lead acid 12 volt batteries yet all right so it's um it's a front wheel drive car uh ff so it has the motor up front here there's the main power cables uh looks like this car's been driven it's pretty dirty so <laughs> i think it's been driven around already it already has like a thousand kilometers on it um yeah so power train um i don't know like um if uh this means anything to anyone yeah water cooling it's a water cooled um, motor I think it outputs around 200 horsepower and uh, yeah uh, not sure what this is just electronics it says do not power wash this uh, liquid fluids here windshield windshield goes in here 
uh, clean filler cap. I don't know what this liquid is for, and I don't know what this liquid is for. Maybe coolant, since it is uh, liquid cooled. Um, I guess it's liquid cooling, which might need replacing. Hmm. あのこの車ってあの F F ですよね。Front wheel drive。フロントね、はい、あの四駆はないですか、はい、FF, FF だけ、OK、ありがとうございます<笑> OK で何馬力ぐらいはい、yeah, 204馬力になります204馬力ありがとうございますここに書いてありますね Yes,、yeah, so、it's 150 kilowatts、uh, 204 PS or it's about 200 horsepower、um, 8000 RPM 310 newton meters of torque, which is,、um, I don't know, living mine battery, 58 watt hour battery. Yeah, 6 kilowatt DC, Chademo, 85 kilowatts, front wheel drive.、Uh, that's the tire size, it's、uh, 18 inch wheels, 485 kilometers of range. Prices are starts at 4.4 million yen.、Uh, options 60,000 yen for options. So total, yeah, you're looking at 4.5 million yen.、Uh, and that's the color, the sun blue color. Interesting. Then financing details. Hmm. So if you're interested, if you live in Japan and you're interested in this car, there's all the information you need. I'm going to check the website out later on too. Really cool car, actually. It's a, the only thing that disappoints me a little bit is the front wheel drive. It's just front wheel drive, and this is an SUV. It should really be four wheel drive.、Um, it wouldn't hurt them just to throw in a small motor in front,、uh, in the back, because、uh, there's so much space back here. I think, it's, I think he had to turn the car off, so I can't open it. Oh no, I can still open it. He had to turn the car off to、uh, open the trunk. But yeah, there's, like, there's so much space down here between. Well, let's see what's in here. Yeah, there's really nothing in here that's necessary. That's the,、uh, the stuff that comes with the car, the ETC, the,、uh, the cameras that come with the car, and then some other stuff, reflective vest in case you're in an accident, tire inflator, and one of those、uh, triangles, I think. But I would give up this stuff and lose a little bit of space. You know, even if you lose this much space, you still have plenty of space in here for storage. And you could have like a small 100,、um, 100 horsepower motor in the back to go with the 200 up front. You'd have a total of like 300 horsepower, which would be perfect for this car. Still, it's a very functional car, a family friendly car, definitely、um, good for families. And,、uh, Yeah, spacious,、uh, functional, lots of storage in the back. So, yeah, if you're looking for a family car with a, some nice features like the sunroof and the, the funky screen and the, the guitar strums,、um, yeah, the only quirky thing is how you open the doors. But you get used to that, I think. And、uh, yeah, lots of usable space in the back.、Uh, it's a little bit pricey for what it is.、Um, I would say this. Would sell better if it was around 3 million yen, 3 to 3.5. So, if you take a, a million yen off, I think it would be a lot more enticing. See, Japanese people generally wouldn't buy Chinese made cars, so I'm not sure how successful BYD is going to be in Japan. I hope they're successful. Japanese car companies haven't made any EVs that are enticing, and if this becomes affordable, like I said, around the three. 3.5 million yen mark, more people will buy it.、Um, but right now, for 3.5 million yen, you can buy a Tesla Model 3、um, rear wheel drive, which is better for performance.、Um, you know, you can get a Model Y for, in Japan anyway, for like 5 million yen, which is only a little bit more than this. So if, you're, if you, you can go from at another 500,000 yen and you can get a Model Y. Or you can pay used for a long range Model 3, four wheel drive long range Model 3 for three,、uh, four, 4.5 million yen. Same price as this. 
If I was going to buy a car for 4.4 million yen, I would buy a long range Model 3 used. That's just my personal opinion. But I said, like I said, this is a good family car. And uh, yeah, I think it's worth looking into. Um, reliability, I have no idea. These cars are new, so we don't know about reliability. And there's also name brands. Um, what do you go for? Do you go for a Tesla or do you go for BYD? Um, yeah, or some other company that's more recognizable. But still, it's a nice looking car. It's pretty cool. I, I kind of want to close the, this. So yeah, um, it's a pretty good looking car. And uh, yeah, a good family car. A uh, little bit pricey for what it is, but yeah. Still, it has plenty of power and plenty of range, so... Yeah, if they can bring the price down a little bit, it'll probably sell pretty well. Hey, it's quite big, yeah. It's about the same as the ID4, I would say, in terms of sizing. All right, that's it. That's BYD in Yokohama. Yeah. We have some other cars here. Um, these are all combustion engine cars. None of these are EVs. Um, yeah, Mercedes, Audi, S3 Sports Pack for 2 million yen. It's so cheap. See, if they could sell EVs for this price, people would buy them up right away. Yeah. Nice cars, but just not interested. Your BMW 330e for 2 million yen. <laughs> What's this? Toyota Land Cruiser ZX. Pretty expensive, seven million yen. Seven million yen. Um, X3, four million, and another Audi. What? Q5 TDI. I think that's diesel. I don't know. Four million yen. <laughs> nice looking cars, but um, probably expensive to maintain. It's only two million yen for the station wagon. Yeah, these cars aren't the most reliable. AMG. The problem with these cars is they require a lot of maintenance. Yeah, see, for the price of the same price as the BYD Auto, you can get, uh, you know, uh, an AMG Mercedes <laughs> red leather. And it looks cool, right? It may not be the, the highest spec car, but it still looks cool. And that's why people buy these cars, right? Because of the name recognition. <laughs> anyway, yep. That's it for today. I'm gonna visit the website and see what they have on the website. They told me that more cars are coming in the future and I want to see what's coming exactly. So I'm gonna check out the website. All right, that's it. All right, so I'm on BYD's uh, Japanese website now. And uh, oh, it just switched. Let's go back. Yeah, so the first thing you see is the uh, Ato 3. Uh, BYD, by the way, stands for Build Your Dreams. And uh, it would be pretty cool if you could do that. <laughs> if you could build your own spec. Um, yeah, so uh, information about who BYD is. EV company, global leader. Uh, it looks like they, produced, uh, they produce a lot of electric buses. I don't think I've ever seen any of these in Japan. Um, maybe in Tokyo, but I've never seen any. Uh, here we have an E6 EV, which I've never seen before. This could be one of their earlier cars. I know the, the Ato 3 is uh, definitely a newer car. Um, yeah. yeah. Information here for customers. E-mobility, E-innovation. Yeah, uh, right now this is the only car they seem to be advertising. I know they have more cars coming. So uh, yeah, if I keep scrolling through the website, I'll probably find some information about that. Buses, uh, an older car here that I've never seen. Um, solar panels, um, masks, <laughs> okay. What else do they do? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, these are the buses here, then an EV6. Let's see what else I can find on this website. K8 bus forklifts and uh, other 
you know, warehouse equipment and the car. You can view more about the car, 4.4 million yen. So yeah, I mean, seeing the car today was definitely interesting. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a nice looking car. It's a, it's a very kind of standard car, uh, very similar to a combustion engine car. I mean, the layout, the design of the car is like that too. It's got the um, engine in the front. It doesn't even have a frunk, even though there's space for a frunk, which I thought was weird. Like they could have put like a bucket in there, you know, like a plastic bucket and made it into a little frunk. Um, it's all just like exposed. So the thinking is very much like combustion engine thinking. The fact that it's a front uh, engine, front wheel drive or front motor, front wheel drive car, which is very, you know, combustion engine way of thinking, which I think is weird. Um, I don't understand why you would do that. I mean, we have the opportunity here with EVs to move away from that traditional way of thinking. Um, 150 kilowatt engine, which is about 200 horsepower. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the range is good. Um, it comes in a few colors here. So the one I saw today was the blue. And then there's the white one, which I saw outside. Um, red one, I haven't seen the red one. And then there's like a gray one and the black one. Oh, no, that's not black. That's green. Forest green. Reminds me of Subaru a little bit. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, EVs don't have to be restricted um, in their design the way combustion engines are. I mean, there's nothing you can do with a combustion engine. It's like you either put it in front of the car, which is like 90% of gasoline cars have the engine in front. And then of course, because the engine is in front, it powers the front wheels, which I get. I understand that's just the limitations of combustion engines. If you want four wheel drive in a front motored car, you have to install a prop shaft, which, um, you know, moves power to the back wheels which is complicated and it's expensive and you know cars like that like the nissan gtr is like that it has an engine in the front a, a shaft that carries power to the back wheels and then you get maybe 60 40 split or something like that you get like 60 percent of the power goes to the front and 40 goes to the back and um some other cars do things like that i think subaru does that mitsubishi did that with their lancers and I get that. That's just the limitations of the uh, design of combustion engines. But EVs don't have to be limited like that. You have cars like um, Aptera, for example, that have hub motors, right? Let's look at Aptera's website. Aptera. So, yeah. Right now, they just have one car, right? Which Which is fine. And they've designed this car to have hub motors and they have um, three possible three motor configuration you know one for each hub it's a three-wheeled uh, vehicle and uh, it's solar powered right so it's like it can it's self-charging and right? it's so aerodynamic so efficient that you don't even need to plug it in um, because it's so efficient and it's got infinite range like no combustion engine could ever do this but it's possible with EVs because of how they're designed and it's like we can do things like this with EVs that would never be possible with any other technology so why are companies like BYD limiting the design to be like a combustion engine I just don't understand it um, you could easily have thrown in another motor in the back given the car 300 horsepower and four-wheel drive that would make the car so much more appealing to people um, especially when they're asking for 4 million yen uh, four and a half million yen for a front wheel drive car. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, that's just my opinion on the whole thing, though. And like I said, Aptera's design is genius. It's like you have hub motors. And that's not the only, uh, you know, vehicle with hub motors. Um, there's like electric bikes that have hub motors, too. Um, so, yeah, where is it? Let's see. Day is it Damon? No, not Damon. Ultra Verge. Pretty sure it's Verge. Yeah, so Verge... Um, has a similar design. It's a hub motor that goes in the back wheel and that leaves, um, you know, and this is like Aptera and Verge, they've designed it like this. What's wrong with the cat? So, 
um, so that why because you don't have to limit your design you don't need to have a big engine in here that powers a chain or uh, or anything like that you can build the motor straight into the wheel and then have all this space here for battery okay that makes sense to me it's intelligent it's an intelligent design um, yeah yeah here's the interior of the BYD it's a, it's a nice interior um, I'll give them that it's a first time I've seen an interior like this um, and it's nice it's comfortable I love that panoramic roof it, it opens up oh yeah and the battery design is really interesting too it's um, a bladed battery design so instead of having the batteries flat it's like blades and I think this makes it safer so I think uh, BY, one of BYD's um, strong points is uh, battery. They're battery manufacturers, so they have the best batteries. Yeah, here's the in internals of the car. Um, so yeah, again, you have the front motor, front wheel drive, and then the battery pack here with bladed batteries inside, and that's it. Um, they could have put hub motors in the back here and still kept all that storage space in the back. Yeah, I don't know. Are, are hub motors like super expensive? I don't really know. I know like this design is like the Nissan Leaf is exactly the same. It's a front wheel drive car, front motor, front wheel drive. The motor is a lot bigger than this on the Nissan Leaf. It takes up a lot more space. And it's, it's just a very old way of thinking, if you ask me. Looks like it has some safety tech built in. ADAS navigation. Yeah, here's the, uh, let's see if this is uh, something cool. Yeah, I think it's just the, sim the same video that was playing uh, inside the car when I was sitting inside it. So yeah, nothing, nothing important here. Yeah, integration with smartphones, I totally get. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, charging is fine. Yeah, this is like the setup I have at home, the 200 volt, 3 kilowatt charging. But you can have up to 6 kilowatt charging um, before you go to Chademo. And uh, I think when I charged my bike at uh, Hyundai, I think that was 6 kilowatt because it was charging at a higher amperage. And then you have DC fast charging, which in Japan has to be Chademo. I, I really dislike Chademo. That's just me. Then it looks like it has vehicle to home uh, infrastructure too, which is cool because um, you know if if there's like a power out, you can um, you can turn on the system and have your house powered by your car. Um, you can also charge your car with solar panels, which is what I do with my vehicles every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see what else we can find. Ah, look at this. We have more cars coming. The Dolphin and the Seal. Okay, so we have the Auto 3. And then maybe in the middle of 2023, we'll have the, the compact Dolphin. And then after that, we'll get the sedan. Let's have a look at this one first. So yeah, it looks a little bit like a Nissan uh, March or Toyota um vits or something like that that's just what they're called in japan compact hatchback um 70 kilowatts which is oh there's also like a higher grade one so it's about the same um it'll have about 100 horsepower standard or 200 horsepower um probably front wheel drive it'll probably use the same motor that the ato 3 uses yeah and then the seal is a sedan similar to you know a tesla maybe model s model 3. Uh, much more power here ah yeah it's dual motor here you have rear wheel drive or all wheel drive front rear 160 kilowatts plus 230. so we're looking at i don't know i guess 400 horsepower something like that it's a bigger car nice design i like this kind of design reminds me of the model s a little bit 
500 kilometers of range. That's a really big range. It's about 350, 400 miles. Hmm. Okay, so that's it looks like that's what's coming up. Um, so it's not just the Yato 3, it's also the Dolphin and the um, Seal. Yeah, so yeah, looking forward to seeing these other cars come out. Um, personally, I don't think I would buy any of these cars. Um, possibly, I would consider the Seal, but I bet it's going to be expensive. You know, because of the specs. Just based on that. Yeah. Yeah, as I was saying in my video too, I don't understand why we're still using um, a lot of the design elements from combustion engine cars. It's just not necessary. Uh, the other thing that caught my eye was the 12 volt battery is still, um, you know, lead acid batteries. Uh, I, I can't believe that no car manufacturer has moved away from that yet. Um, you know, my um, bikes both have, um, I believe, I don't know about the BMW, that it just says maintenance free. I don't know what that means exactly. It means you never have to change it. So does that mean it's a lithium ion battery too? Um, I know the, the new M MQI uses a lithium ion battery for the 12 to power the 12 volt systems. And it's like it's it's a remnant from the past to still be using uh, lead acid batteries for this. Um, I remember reading about Tesla saying that they were going to move away from 12 volts and they were going to move to, I think, 24 volts. And they were going to use a lithium battery for that and power all the electronics in the car with that. Um, and then which would make sense. And uh, yeah, it's it's just like when cars only needed the battery for the starter, uh, that was fine. Uh, or maybe for the headlights, right? But cars have become more and more dependent on electronics uh, with computer systems and self-driving systems and lights everywhere and navigation systems and big screens, you know, like iPad size screens, 12-inch um, screens, 17-inch screens. Some of these newer EVs, like the Mercedes, have these massive 20, 30-inch screens. Now, these these things all require power, and they can only get that power from a 12-volt battery, which means these 12-volt batteries are points of failure for electric vehicles. So we really need to move away from that design. Um, I'm, I still can't believe these big companies haven't thought about this. Um, it's, it blows my mind, to be honest. Um, so I don't fully blame BYD for that. <laughs> That's just the, uh, the way things are right now. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, like, you know, the sunroof is all electronic. All that requires power that comes out of the 12 volt. It doesn't come from the main battery. None of that is powered by the main battery. It's powered by the 12 volt um, lead acid battery that fails after two, three years and you have to replace it. Um, that's one of the weak points of my i3 and it's a famous uh, problem issue that the, the the 12 volt fails after two or three years and you have to have it replaced and if you don't replace it preemptively the car starts having problems and then you can be left stranded because of that um yeah it's an interesting situation um but you know I, the i3 was designed back in 2015 so i understand back then they didn't have much choice but it's been like 50 almost well it's been more than 10 years right so <laughs> it's about 10 years since that car was designed initially and we've got newer designs coming out now that are still they still remind me of like combustion engine designs um so anyway the the before i keep talking about stuff like that um i just want to focus on the b the ato 3 and the way it is now, if it was 3 million yen, I think for sure. But 4.4 million yen, um, you can get uh, better cars than this for that price. I always go to this website, kakaku.com, because it's like it shows you everything that's available in Japan for the cheapest prices, even cars. And mainly, originally, this website was used more for PC and home electronics maybe cameras that kind of stuff but now you can get anything here sim cards broadband internet um you know travel uh sports uh, everything even like furniture and 
video games, of course. Um, so yeah, I actually found my i3 through this website. If I scroll down to um, uh, yeah EVs, and then you know you have a list of all the EVs available in Japan right now. Um, it's funny because the top selling cars aren't even really EVs. Uh, the Aura, the X Trail, and the Serena are all e-powered vehicles. That means they have uh, electric motors powered by a gasoline engine. Uh, same with the this X Trail here and the Note and the Serena here. Uh, and this Note here, the new one. The only real EVs here are the Aria and the Sakura. And maybe the Lexus UX, there's an EV version of this car. But yeah, these are the only two actual EVs. The rest are all fake EVs. And then if you come down here, you have a list of the most popular EVs in Japan. The Leaf is one of those. I get it. It's fine. And it's funny how it's all like Nissan cars. It just goes to show that nobody else is making EVs in Japan except Nissan. Then, of course, there's the Model 3. And my favorite, the Ionic 5. The Model Y is still really expensive. The Model 3 starts used at 3.4 million yen. So you can get a Model 3 for 3.4 million yen, or you can get um, the Ato 3 for 4.4 million yen. You see what I mean? It's not really worth it. You can get an Ionic 5 new for 4.7 million yen uh, with roughly the same specs but a much nicer interior and a much nicer design in my opinion there aren't really that many um, used right now because it's still a fairly new car and uh, i think people are keeping them because they're good cars um, model threes are now plentiful used and you can select um let's see from the cheapest price uh, i think this is the cheapest price yeah the cheapest model three um, standard Plus, um, I, I think that it's just like the rear wheel drive standard range car is the cheapest one with only um, uh, 13,000 kilometers on the clock, which is about 8,000, 9,000 miles. It's nothing. The car is still practically new um, for 3.4 million yen, which is like, say, $34,000 if you ignore the exchange rate. And then it goes up from there and these are all like standard um, then you get the long range cars I know this doesn't look like standard range but it is <laughs> someone just um, changed the wheels um, but yeah if you scroll down eventually you get to like the long range cars standard standard Yeah, actually, I've been looking at these before and I picked one here. Look at this one, right? So this is a 2021 uh, Model 3 long range all wheel drive, right? And uh, gray and black, which I like. This is a, a, a practically a new car with 20,000 kilometers on the clock, uh, which is about, you know, 15,000 miles or something like that. And yeah, it's in good condition. It's got the white interior, which is nice. Uh, a few modifications by the previous owner. But you can get this, a long range four wheel drive Tesla Model 3, which outperforms the Ato 3 and costs less than the Ato 3. You know, obviously it's, it's a used car, but it's barely used. Like I've seen others on here with like 7,000 kilometers, which is the same as new. Um, yeah, so if I were buying a car right now, this is what I would buy. I wouldn't be buying the Auto 3. I'd be buying a Model 3 or an Ionic 5 for the same kind of price, you know. So to make this car enticing to people, they need to drop the price down to below 3 million, like below 4 million rather. So like 3 point something with um, extras. All right, well, that's about it for BYD, I guess. Um, eventually, they're going to release um, more cars, and maybe I'll go back and take a look at those other cars and see how they price those cars. Um, I'm hoping they're going to price them uh, more competitively. Like, the Dolphin will definitely be cheaper uh, than the Ato 3. Um, I would say 
um, for this card to do well, it would need to be around the 2 million yen mark, like the Sakura. Uh, I know the Sakura is around the 2 million yen mark. Uh, yeah, it's, so you can buy it new for two, two, uh, 2.3 million yen, used for 2.1 million yen, which is like $20,000. I'm sure lots of people in America and Europe would love this little car for $20,000 because that's how much it's going for in Japan and I'm seeing more and more and more of these cars everywhere on the road here. I've seen like I see them every day now. Why? Because they're cheap. It's not like people don't want to buy EVs. They want affordable EVs and this is the first truly affordable EV in in the world right now. Well, maybe not the most affordable, but it's one of the most affordable by a famous company like Nissan by a you know a recognized brand like Nissan. I mean, maybe you can get like a Skoda or Enyaq or something for less, but I don't know. Like you can't get that in Japan. But in Japan, anyway, the, the Sakura is the most affordable car you can get. Uh, new, you know what I mean? You can get like a used i3, like mine for less, but, you know, i3s are quirky. They're not everybody's taste. Um, the Dolphin, I hope, will be priced um, competitively to be the same price as the Sakura, 2 point something million yen. The seal will no doubt be more expensive than the Ato 3. It'll probably end up costing like 4 million yen or 5 million yen, depending on the specs. And yeah. Or you could buy a bus <laughs> if you're into that. Uh, an e bus, because that's what these guys sell. All right, that's it.